Welcome back, strange crew. You are tuned into another trip through life's deep cuts. We hope you enjoy the ride. Dave Love, welcome back to the show. Oh, it's been a few years, but I'm here. Yeah, gl- global pandemic later. Thrilled to be yep. here. Look at this backdrop, guys. Oh my goodness. I feel like it's a whole, so much has changed, both yeah, like for you guys here and also our setup. <laughs> like- yeah. Things have changed. The girls are old. It's like three years, three, four years yeah. since been here. So, you know, the girls are way older. Yeah. Babies in high school. Um, the records have gone through. I've actually downsized. Oh, that, I don't believe that. Yeah. Can you talk about that? There's about 2,500 have come out, but it'd be hard. That's to substantial. Do. I'd be like, there's 30 that have come out of yeah. ours. Right. And I'll still think I'm downsizing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So um. it was hard to do, but I did. We went through everything um, and I just pulled out stuff that was in rough shape or things that I would never list to again. And uh, so, and that wound up being about 2,500 and, some went straight to Valley Village and wound up that Chris Mike came over and looked through it as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. I was going to say, I, I knew it was probably going to go yeah. to somebody. One of those guys. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. They were on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exciting. And when did you, when did you downsize? Well, that was, well, in 2019 as well. 2019. Wow. So probably not long after, after we were we here. Yeah. yeah. No, that's wild. And, and how is the, how is like the music and the collection kind of changed since we've been here last? Well, initially downsized, Sarah probably was, oh, good, it's smaller now. But records do keep showing up uh, in mail occasionally. And we'll make a trip to Backstreet or or Suck Spin saying, oh, the guys have something on hold. But it's been, I would say it's been fewer. It's it's a little bit more of the special releases. Right. So, like, for example, uh, last week, I picked up Gord Downey's new record. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. And are your girls buying records yet? Yeah, we, uh, some Taylor Swift. I did see oh, so yes. that. That was kind of what was going to, but I didn't know that could yeah. be for the parents, right? You never mm-hmm. know, right? So I was curious. So are, are they kind of scoping things out? I know for me when I was younger, it was, you know, um, CD, there was all these different Columbia House, and yeah. my dad would just yeah. say, pick out a few, whichever, right? D- did they do that with you guys now to kind of figure out how they get records? Or? Not so much as me. So they can stream. They stream right. records. But it's amazing. We'll put something on the, the radio, and they know all the words. I'm like, where did they hear this? How do they know the words? It's just, it's amazing. So, yeah, they, they don't really talk to us much about music. I was anticipating that now that Sadie's in high school, that there would be friends or, or guys or boyfriends that would show up and, like, drool over the records. But that hasn't happened yet. Sadie's boyfriend, he's more in the sports. Uh-huh. And uh, we took him to his first concert, like, a month ago at the Imperial. Oh, wow. Uh, Tim Baker from... Oh, you know, wow. Yeah. Nice. I think you really enjoyed it. It was a good one for be his first rec- uh, first show. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that about, you know, uh, high school and whatnot. Because when I was in high school, I mean, me and my dad were the closest we were ever. And he was very much responsible for what I had learned growing up to that point to start to have a, a like in to grunge music and yeah. really heavy metal music. But at the time, even if we were listening to April Wine or ACDC or whatever in the car, of course I knew the words, but there was still something a little bit lame about it, even though it wasn't at all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now yeah. I look back, and I wish I could embrace those times and be screaming the lyrics with him, and it's so funny. And that's that's why I was kind of making a joke out in the hallway where it's like, I would never move out if I were you. Yeah. 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 You know, like the just the ability of, of how you catalog and foster the love of music. And I just think that that'll carry over in, like, professional development. That's one thing my dad yeah. taught me with cataloging music is – it kept my memory sharp and it allowed me the ability to kind of take in a lot of information and then put it to use someday. Yeah. Right. The girls have heard a ton of music, whether it's at the cottage, like live music or stuff that we're playing. And there's things they know all the words to, 
and kind of like, but at some point they're like, uh, maybe they wouldn't tell their friends they like it, right? Mm. But as they get older, they'll probably look back and go, oh, I'm glad I heard that at home. You know what that was for me? Fish. So when I was younger, Fish was like the the crunchy band, right? Like I appreciated them from a talent perspective, but no. As I got older, I was like, oh my goodness, I really missed the the train on that. And now it's like they're one of my favorite bands. And I think they're some of the most like heavy metal lyrics yeah, out yeah. there. But at the time, I just, I I kind of stubbed my nose at it. Yeah. And it's funny how you do that sometimes with music or movies or ooh, companies. It doesn't matter. Sometimes just like that impression can kind of leave you with that. Mm. I'm ashamed to say that Fleetwood Mac was one of those kind of bands to me. Yeah. Like from the beginning, you know, like I always thought of it as more like, you know, they say dad rock. It was yeah. mom, mom rock. Yeah. And I never, and then it took, I think hanging out with you and yeah. you know, when you reach a certain age, when you're a grown woman, yeah. you'll know, you'll listen to rumors and you'll know what it means. And I didn't like, know that. Yeah, it was really, yeah, it was you that I really kind of got, like, rediscovered Fleetwood Mac. I thought Mac. we just kind of poked fun at people about that. No, I, yeah, no, I didn't really listen to a whole lot of Fleetwood Mac until we started hanging out. This is, a, I honestly, this is an aha moment for there me. There you go. This is a Strange, Strange ex- exclusive, because yeah. I thought she was, like, the biggest fan of life, so. Yeah, no, I uh, didn't listen to a whole lot of Fleetwood Mac until. So funny. Yeah. For th- me, it was uh, Willie Nelson, so I oh, remember yeah, as a kid, point. my parents would have Willie on playing and I could not stand it. Right. I thought, he, you know, like, I'm not listening to this country, go on, whatever. And I remember, like, it so well. And then here it is, you know, it's just above me now. I probably have more Willie in the collection than anything else. And I totally understand where yeah. you're coming from. My grandmother was the same. She loved Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard, all those folks. And she used to say, you know, people who say that they don't just like certain genres of music don't understand how or where they come from. So if you love Johnny Cash, well, you may not like Alan Jackson, but you like country music. Mm -hmm. And so that really changed my view probably around 15 or 16 when she kind of gave me that. It was definitely a a new way to kind of look at music. And I realized that what you actually like is kind of what makes you who you are. That's right. So you can like popular music, but if you like something really obscure, people kind of remember that, you know, Sharice loves Sweetwood Mac or, you know, whatever. I'm the Bob Dylan girl yeah, for a lot of people. I know, I should have said that, but. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like you have that, like, that notion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. that's that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. So, I guess, so. Uh, you know, I was going to ask about things at the cottage, but obviously I imagine there was a bit of a pause there yeah. for the global panini, but now that things are sort of opening up again, sort of what has, you know, how have things developed uh, with, with yeah. that venue? Well, definitely things were on hold for a couple of years, but mm-hmm. we just had our first show of the new year uh, on Sunday. And it we, looked great. It looked yeah. So fun. Yeah. It full house. And it was a nice weekend. Nice so. weekend. The weather was great. And yeah. it, um, it was Del Barber, but it was Del Barber and band. So we had three guys with them, a full drum set, the whole, you know, uh, pedal seal. It was great, but it's hard to imagine that they were able to fit all that on and, the stage. The, yeah. But it, they did, and it looked awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and guys, if you're listening or watching, we definitely encourage you to follow the cottage online, um, you know, it's a really beautiful spot where we're at out here in Kingston. Uh, yeah, and I Kingston, post videos and yeah, and it's and if you're also someone who might be touring or you're coming through the province yes. and it might be, it's a great way. Um, the space is beautiful, the environment is stunning. You know, so I would just say, you know, if you're thinking about coming through New Brunswick, we should we should chat and make sure that you're yeah. linked up with Dave and Sarah because um, just I remember going in the very first time and mm-hmm. seeing how hospitable and just how welcoming you made that and then when you showed us the fire pit and being able to walk around the property as the show was starting and being able to actually talk to your friends when you go to a bar or you know even a theater or whichever it's very get in get to your seat talking over each other and it's it's to me that's not usually my favorite experience especially now as I'm getting older yeah so I would rather go to an early show and be able to talk to people and leave by maybe nine or 10. Yeah. It was so funny that this show, it started at 6 PM. Love it. But, uh, Dell was joking that he just did a whole cross hand tour. Our show was the last, but nothing would start at 6 PM. They were all 10 or, or later. That's so late. And yeah. I like, I'm, I'm, I'm in my late thirties, but here's so, the thing, like even eight, nine o'clock, yeah. like by the time you've had a long, busy day at work, 
and you do the peopling, the social batteries, I don't, I just think so that low. we're, we're required to do a lot more yeah. in life now and so many different capacities and my social battery, I might just be sleeping from home, but I don't have it as much. And uh, I do find it hard to kind of turn it on sometimes. Yeah. Especially, yeah, late going out that late, especially at bar shows or stuff like that, where there's so many people and you see everyone you know and everyone wants to talk and they're yelling. about Spain. People in Spain do it right. And I have a couple friends who are living in Spain right now. And they said every day from um, one till five, everything shuts down and yep. people have a little nap. They go for supper. And then the nightlife starts around yeah. 536. And around 9 or 10, everybody goes back home for the second siesta. That That's so nice. And they don't wait till 10 or 11 o'clock to go out and party till 2 or 3 in the morning because they do have to get up in the morning or they have yeah. families to take care of. And it's just not – it takes your whole body almost a whole, like, couple days to get – out of going to a concert now right it man does. the europeans have it so right like i think about in paris just in general this is sort yeah. of off topic but you know like apparently um like people in paris take like two hour lunches no yeah. matter who you are even if you're like a journalist that's like on deadline you take your two hour lunch and i'm like well, it be, must be so nice to have like that, that pace of life and having that much respect for time to yourself and like i'm just like i could not imagine It'd be nice but yeah, yeah europe has it right <laughs> and so any any shows coming up right Right now that you'd like to mention to anybody well uh there definitely are a few like every month june july august september there's shows e each month just like one or two shows a month but our next one is uh carolyn brooks who is one third of the good lovelies oh, no way. so she's come through but just doing a solo show okay. but we're really excited for her to be here and i'm anticipating it'll sell out but I've got to, I definitely still have to get the word out there about the show. Right. But uh, there's, after her, there's another guy, um, Benji Rowland, who just made a record with Joel Plaskett. And I didn't know him ahead of the time, but he's now one of my favorite artists. He's oh, really, 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 really good. Yeah, I'll have to and look into him. That's mm. a Sunday. I tried to do matinee shows, like a Sunday matinee. We love that. Yes, Oscar yes. Like great, you, you're back home for supper. It's perfect, um, and it's great for the artist too. Yeah, because it, yeah, it exactly. helps definitely on accommodations and stuff as well. Because nothing's yep. awful than trying to do a load in at six and yep. trying to be checked out by eleven. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that that definitely changes um, the set that they're going to play and how people experience that as well. Yeah. Yep. Like that's been, like I'm excited to come out. Show. Yeah, no, I can't wait. I'm so glad shows are back. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah, I am too. So I well, know oh. the show. Uh, well, so every well, there's a show every month, um, but a lot of cases the the artists may not be well known, but they're really they're really good good artists. When you look into them, go to the Facebook page or whatever, um, they're really enjoyable artists. Oh, so, you, you've always been great yeah. at, like, really booking great talent that's coming through. I've discovered a lot of people from your guys' shows. And we're, we're a little bit spoiled that way because I, I tend to wind up book someone I like, right? I don't want to have a show here that I, I wouldn't really enjoy myself. So we're yeah. kind of spoiled that way. Yeah. No, and, and you should have that right to yeah. pick, right? Because right. You're, you're trying to create not just – you know, a show or whatever. You're bringing people into your home, yeah. your land, the space, and you're giving them an experience, right? So, and that's something Sharice and I, like when we're trying to do events and things, we, whether they be lounges or connection over record events, we we don't necessarily want it to be about the drinks or what's happening. We want people to be able to actually talk about what's been going on in life and everything else might be a highlight. But yep. I think for us, we realized that um, a lot of people are going through really... Um, polar opposites in the same day mm -hmm. so a lot of really great things and a lot of really tragic things and it's right. it's really hard um i think a lot of us feel like harvey two-faced from batman sometimes <laughs> where like you just feel a bit crazy i've used that a lot to sharice where i just say i feel like i'm insane or something and it's hard sometimes to feel the joys of music or to be excited about a show when yeah. life is still beating on your back door and so I think it's important to have places where people can actually go for a walk while the band's setting up and talk about yep. what's been going on. If their kids are going through troubles at school, if there's issues with, um, you know, business or medical issues or anything like yep. that, you know, like that's, that's where the realness, I think that we're there's usually here. We do two sets. So they, they get to have that break and go out and catch a breath of fresh air. 
but after the show on Sunday night, uh, it ended like 8.30. But people came outside and they just kind of milled around. Nobody wanted to leave. Mm-hmm. They were all in a good mood. The night was That's right. nice. And uh, it was great. They hung around for... And they could chat with the artist. Yeah, yeah. They could, exactly. Half an hour, 40 minutes. Just so much more intimate. Like, mm-hmm. I would much rather... I would even pay higher, higher premium ticket prices yeah. to have just that that honest, real intimate experience. And I think the purchasing power is there, for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, um, you know, as a couple, as parents, you know, as people are putting on these shows, what, what, what gives you guys that momentum? Well... It's probably a few things. So we've all, I think I said this before, but we always went out to shows. We still go to some shows that are easy to, you know, accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was part of it was like, let's continue to do shows, but have them here. Let's bring the band here to us. Uh, And so far it's been working, except for the, you know, the few years, the pandemic. Um, uh, the other part, just having children, we want to expose them to to good music, to live music, and and we've done that. Like we did actually have a show last summer. We had uh, two. We had two shows that were they wound up being mass shows, but the kids got to experience that. Um, Dave Gunning was in, and Old Man Ludica was in. Oh, that's a great it was show! Really, wow, really I th- I, th- I feel like I saw that online. I really yeah. did because whenever I see, I always know a lot of my friends are going to that. So that that gets us going, you know, knowing the fact that the kids will be there and get to experience that, and they it's part of the time, you know, it's a setup and the in the time at the campfire with the band afterwards. It's those those moments are kind of special. Um, same thing when we had Del Barber here, Sadie brought her boyfriend for her second, for his second show. So we had him to the Imperial for the first and then here at the house for his second show. So his parents is going to think he's a music guy yeah, now. Yeah. Who's he okay. hanging out with? Yeah. He's being converted. <laughs> well, I just, and maybe I'm being an emotional person here, but when I first met you guys, I could really tell your love for each other, your love both for music, but just as individuals, like I feel like you guys very much are best friends and you're a very good team and the love is very, very sincere and that follows over on how kind your children are and how kind you are to most of the, every, any business that we've talked to that has been, always has the best things to say. But when we come to your home, even the way that Oma is, the way that just all the little pillars are, I just think that that's really special and you don't see that in this world too often, Mm -hmm. especially over an amount of time. Right. And you don't see, you know, it could have been really easy to just say, hey, let's just focus on the family yeah. and, and the home and, you know, and just go to the shows that we can. But I love that you'd nurture that back. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I wanted the cottage to kind of be that way. So it's hard for bands to be out on the road. So I wanted when they come here to be like Dell's been here before and he knew he booked the show again, knowing I'm sure that they could get a good sleep. And, and they're uh, safe, yeah. and their yeah, their the car's not going to get broken clean, into. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want, I definitely want to instill that, yeah. you know, not just to us, but back to the band and the audience. Yeah, yeah that's so good. We we want to pay it forward to the artists in that we want to keep them on the road. We love live music, so yeah. we want to support them to stay on the road. Mm-hmm. It's rocking. Yeah, that's right. that's what and it's about. It, how hard is it for them to drive across the country? Where are they sleeping every night? What are their shows like? Some of them were really, really late. Yeah. Some of them were in maybe the Legion where people are still playing the VLT. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? So yeah. when they came here and everyone that was here wanted to see them. Yeah, it's a very different experience. Right? You feel so it. So the artists are like, even though you might have half the audience you would in a different venue right everyone was there wanted to see them was excited to see them was buying the records was talking yeah. to them and for the artist yeah it was a special show and they'll remember that mm-hmm. yeah so i think that's why dell's come back time and time again we so that was our third time with him as well as old man ludica who's yeah. been here three times now as well yeah. so it's just like for those shows they sell out super quick but everyone that comes we got to get Ryan out here. Shreves. Yeah, Ryan Stanley. Ryan, if you're watching, you're going to be playing The Cottage. Yeah. Ryan plays um, in a band called The Wicked Deadlies, and he also is the solo guitarist in Matt Mays' band. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. We just talked to him 
Oh, no, you're talking about Maze? Or- yeah. Yes. And so we've been working with Ryan a little bit just to kind of help him, like, with website and, you know, just marketing stuff to help support his, you know, first solo tour and his first album. And, you know, like, these are the kinds of experience that we want to curate for him so that those tours, those first shows, those photographs of him, you know, doing that stuff on his own. Yeah. I mean, I see how important photographs are to you guys. Mm-hmm. So that's been a big part of us trying to figure out, you know, how do people really connect over this stuff, especially after such a... Well, it's funny you mentioned that too, because when we were going through the pandemic, I thought, okay, people are going to be like starved to get out to shows again. And like all the shows are in the sellout, but it's not the case. Yeah. As, you know, it's been a... Well, for a while, there's kind of a start, stop, start, stop, start. But now that things are wide open, like people, I think, are still hesitant. To, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think people are very much, um, if it's not something that they're, they'll wait until the day of to make yeah. sure that, oh, yeah, why don't we go out to Kingston, go to Reeds, and go to the, the cottage show? Right. It needs to, and that's kind of like we've been kind of road mapping that with our first live show tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, of course we want people to buy advance tickets. Of course you do. And you want to save the money at the door and you want the artist to be paid. Um, but last minute town and people yeah. are like, they they lead busy lives. So you need to incentivize them to talk more about the experience, who they're going to see, the snacks, the music, and then it creates more of how that fits into their timeline. That's what we've tried to do with tomorrow. I, agreed. Um, people that are popular sell out. And yeah. people who want to be there want to be there. Yeah. Even at shows at the Imperial, like things are going to sell out if yeah. the person is popular. So it's the lesser known artists are so much harder to get people out to, yeah. even mm-hmm. though they're True. amazing. Yeah. People don't know them. Mm-hmm. So they're not buying the tickets, which yeah. it, it's a, you know, it's a catch 22. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Ryan's um, actually playing on June 1st at the Five and Dime. Okay. Yeah. Um, with Catherine Kennedy, I believe. Oh, nice. And someone else. Catherine was booked to play here. Um, I think it was the first show that we had to cancel. Oh, really? And there's a ambulance going by. <laughs> it's because the oh. show is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a poor joke. I hope everyone's okay. <laughs> Canceled. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Um, one thing I wanted to check, we wanted to check in with you guys about is one of the things that blew us away last time we were here was your family photo albums, perhaps the most unique thing photo album I, we've ever seen. Um, I so, personally want to blow up a bunch of them yeah. for my apartment, yeah. specifically Bob Seger, the Doobie Brothers. Mm. There's a few others, but those really, yeah. those I would buy. So if you ever decide to do merch like that, I will yeah. buy them. Yeah, the Doobie okay. Brothers, that was a fun one. Yeah, so for people um, that are uh, listening and watching that or haven't listened to the previous episode, uh, the family has, they recreate album covers, essentially, of so many different records, and it, it's it's so cool. We'll have um, some video of it um, in, the, in the in the video episode version, but uh, yeah, so do, have you guys done any more recently? We, I've been continuing to do it. It's funny. The girls are in less and less of them as they now get older. They don't want to pursue. pursue. They're going to kick themselves in the butt yeah. so bad when they're our age. Well, that's okay, because I have so many of them when they were little. Mm-hmm. You just Photoshop but, them in. Yeah. Take their selfies. They were there. <laughs> I do more. I find more that I can do that are more um, maybe art-based. Yeah. That I can try and sort of something for me to keep my hands busy, too. It's just something I can either recreate on the computer or, or paint or draw or something. But, yeah, we've been... Um, there's probably two more albums done since you were last year. Wow. Yeah. What are we pot. doing with our lives, Sharice? <laughs> I know. You guys need to put out like a, a data or like a master class about like time management Man. and like, well, the worst thing booking. now is I'm running out of good covers to do. Mm. Yeah. Like so, that. you know, what would be interesting is like, I know, I'm not sure if you're on like TikTok or anything, but if you were on those platforms, you could ask people. And they would, like, try to petition yeah. to see if you would, like, make something crazy. Mm-hmm. But what's crazy is the more video views that you get, you actually get money. Do they monetize Canadian creators now? Yeah, it's been monetized for six months, girl. Oh, well, there, this is why you do the social get media. Get on the trains, guys. Get that, <laughs> get that money. I do the words. <laughs> get that bag. No, but for real, that's, that's one of the things, like, we try to do when trying to ask different questions for certain accounts. We'll just say, hey, like, let us know what you want to. And people love to 
Especially if right. it's not an opinion or something scandalous, right? Um, you ask people, hey, what are you spending today? They're happy to let you know. But if you ask them, hey, you coming to the show tomorrow night? They may not say yes or no. So you have to kind of work in the different ways. Right. So it'd be interesting maybe on the cottage page, just be like, hey, yeah. we're thinking about making some album covers. Here's a few we've done. What should we do? Mm. We've done 6,300 of them. We yeah. might have done the, your pick, but try. Yeah. You never know. Never know. Might be some good again. guests, right? We'll come out. We'll be the girls sometime. We'll remake one with you. Yeah, yeah. Special Strange Grooves edition. Just be in your family photo album and looking back right. years from now, being like, who are they? <laughs> These random. They were the cousins from down the road. <laughs> the adopted. Like, yeah, we keep wayward. asking. Yeah. We did have, sorry, um, when some friends of the girls kept drop by, occasionally they would wind up in, a, in one. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. 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 So which one do you guys want done? Yeah. Oh, you know what would be a really funny one? I always find it, it's like it's super greasy, but like the cover, and you'll know what I mean when I say it. It's the lighthouse cover, What a Feeling, I think it's called, or some kind of, feel. you know what I mean? It has the group, the band, and they're all just like, <laughs> they're just yeah. greasy dudes, but I think it'd be really cool to recreate. Like, does this the composition? You know, that'd be a fun one. Or did you guys already do that one? We didn't do it. All right, we're going to miss that one. It's right up here behind us so we could have a look at it and see, like, okay, is that something we could do or not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's another one? Oh, man. That's a good question. Oof. I didn't even th- I didn't even think that you would you ask were not that. ready. Right. <laughs> On the spot. Um, oh, the, maybe you could do a series. Like, your, your daughters might be interested in this as the Taylor Swift Midnight's album oh, covers because yes. she has, like, a whole collection that form a clock. Yeah. 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 I was just thinking that. Yeah. Because yeah. we do have one of the Midnight ones yeah. upstairs. Yeah. I can't buy all four. Who does that? Um, I have a friend that has. So, like, he ordered the whole package. I'm wow. like, who does you know, that? I don't. Calling you out by name. Oh, John Vorbley behind the camera. The dance, Fleetwood Mac, the dance. That is, I, that was a great one. Mm-hmm. Thank you, John. Yeah. That it would be perfect. I just yeah, assumed. All in the picture, in po- uh, you know, all in a pose. Yeah, that's totally okay. do. We're going to make it happen. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. Photoshop it. We'll make it happen. There you go. <laughs> that's a good one, though. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to, like, when we're driving home, Kate, we're going to be thinking, like, a bunch of different covers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah, that's the thing. It always happens, right? Yeah. So, it's been a while. It's been, like, three years. Since I, I think we, I believe we, I asked this question last time, but strange solitary sounds and uh, feel free to answer. I want both of your answers. You're stuck on a desert island or somewhere in the wilderness by yourself. You can only bring three records with you. What will they be? Well, I was thinking a little bit about this last couple of days, but I'd probably bring something Grateful Dead related, mm-hmm. which... Some people would go, ooh. Some people might go, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> um, then I would also bring probably something Neil Young. Yeah. And the other one, which is sort of local, I'd bring something Eric Tripp or Rick White related. Because um, I'm just fascinated with everything he puts out. How many shows of Eric Tripp have you seen? Well, I... I should be happy for the ones that's up. I'm probably about, probably about ten shows. Yeah. But I, there's a couple I missed that bugs me that I missed them. Yeah. But I shouldn't worry about that. But they have that marker down at Area Five Hundred Six. The yeah, Eric's trip. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. There's a Rick White record I picked up. I brought down here. So it's Rick plays the Sadies. Oh. It's unbelievable. So he's able to maintain like. It sounds like the Sadies. It's the same arrangement. Oh, wow. Songs, but it's Rick's like psychedelia and just heaviness. And it's pretty cool. That's pretty wicked. Yeah. Oh. How about you? Well, I don't know. Because Dave listens to the Grateful Dead, every, this day in Grateful Dead history, which is every day. <laughs> but that's okay because they play all the, you know, go back and do live concerts. So I think, yeah, where he's got some of the Dave's picks, if you had to, well, one day's picks is three CDs, which is perfect because that's a concert. So that will do great. Right, yep. Yeah. Any one of those. I mean, any concert, that would be good. Uh, yeah. Locally, I mean, I think 
you know, you said Joel Plaskett, where his his three album, I'm like, well, there's another This three. is strategic. Yeah, I love I like it. This. Th- there's another three there. So then, oh, oh no. God, the third one, I, I don't know what I'd have to do. Something old, I don't know. Like you said, Bob Dylan, some Leonard Cohen. I don't oh, know. No. Where, where do you go? Where do you go with that you one? You need like a record that puts you in your feels. Well, yeah, then I'm going to go with something like Ska or, um, you know, I don't know, yeah. something new, some yeah. Taylor, some Harry Styles. You didn't say the girls, yeah. the girls grew into Harry Styles there for a while, so. Sarah, oh. who, what's your favorite band? Oh, I, I, I don't know if I can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> but like, maybe who is someone that you've listened to, like from like growing up to now that you're still like absolutely? Because like, when you say ska, I'm like, okay, this is I like this where this is going. So I'm curious. Like whenever I tell people that I listen to Steely Dan, for some reason people are like blown away and they're like, "What? That's crazy! You're yeah. so young. What do you mean, Steely Dan?" And I'm like, no, they're a great band. I've, I listened to the Doobie Brothers all growing up. It's not like it wasn't super far. It's not that obscure. Yeah. yeah. But, like, is there somebody like that that sticks out to you? Well, I think Dave's just educated me with the Grateful Dead and just how many decades they have, but how much they contributed right. to music and how bands toured and, and their wall of sound, which yeah. was just incredible. Yeah. And when you do listen to some of those podcasts and how – they interacted with other bands and, right. and how they influenced other things. And yeah. Like you said, would fish be fish if it wasn't for the Grateful Dead? That's true. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, I'm there with you. I had best friends that had, you know, yeah. were, are huge fish heads. Yeah. Um, I it was like you. I missed the boat on the fish thing. Came yeah. to it way too late. Um, you know, so I, I think you'd have to go back with the Grateful Dead and, and the, the vast, you know, how much – music they have out there and and you can listen to a song and they've played it 10 different ways oh it's insane yeah 10 different times by 10 you know over three different have you heard stash in 1998 when they played it at the airfield when trey was had his this haircut and you're like i didn't hear that version (laughs) exactly so so there's just such a there's so much to listen to there that you'd hear it four times and not even know it was the same song so maybe i don't know yeah i don't know amazing i get that I get that. I think Primus would probably be the band that I've listened to now the longest that now I can tell over time that if they had 10 different versions of a song, I'd be able to tell, oh, we added a guitar solo in there. That's pretty cool. But unless you like really have diehard love for the band, you probably don't care. And like, I would never put on like a random version of John the Fisherman to show Sharice how they redid a drum fill. She would be like, I don't see the difference unless she's, you know what I mean? (laughs) Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just, you know, that's just my example off the top of my head. Yeah, Dylan's like that for me too. Like I yeah. listened to, and he's sort of what well Dylan and the yeah. Dead have like recorded an album together, but yeah, similar right. deal. Like they always he always depending on the mood he's in, he'll do different versions of the songs. And some of his live versions, like um the Rolling Thunder Review era, like some of the versions of those songs are my favorite. Yeah. Um better than the originals. So yeah. it's interesting. And it's interesting, like with artists like that, like a Neil Young or a Frank Zappa or People that have really big catalogs, yeah. the dirt, like the 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 vast, so many bootleg <laughs> series, <Yeah. laughs> like so many different uh, like versions of themselves, mm-hmm. yeah. like era, like David Bowie. Yeah, how so many like alter egos he's had, right? And like, yeah. So I I'm I'm just gonna assume that people would also have this question. Um, how do you qualify a record coming into the collection? Is it mm. as simple as oh, like? We love Taylor Swift. The girls would like Taylor Swift. We're going to bring it in. Two, do you have a list of things that you are on, like the the white whale list that you're yeah. still looking for? Yeah, I printed off the list. It's not a huge list, but there I've always had a list since, uh, I don't know, probably 30 years now I've had a list. But it's always changing, evolving. And lately, I don't get to cross a lot of things off the list. But it's so satisfying when you so get satisfying. To. <laughs> but it's funny if you were to look at the list, there's not like there's not necessarily a lot of rare things. They're just things I haven't found. Found, mm. yeah. Yeah. So I've recently introduced Dave to iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to I've the been internet. Listening to it for a while, and he's like, "Why would I do that? I've got I've got the records." Right. But he's got some music, guys. <laughs> you know. <laughs> then there's things on his list. That he could then listen to and go, oh, I don't want that. Or, oh, yes, I do. But it was kind of an interesting, like, light bulb moment. He's like, oh, my God. Those things that have been on my list for 30 years, I can listen to it. And, and you know, something to just jump on top of that, something that Sharice and I have found is now that a lot of things are being repressed for the very first time or just pressed for the first time, 
we're kind of noticing now that if if we if there's a new Primus album that comes out in a week and it's already being on iTunes or Spotify and I already pay for a subscription on that, yep. I'll check it out. And if I love it, if I love it and I'm at Second Spin or I'm at Backstreet or I'm in Toronto and I see that record, I can make a qualified purchasing yeah. decision of whether yep. I want that to live in my right. or will it probably sit in sealed yeah. and I'll I'll just continue to on the go on my phone. So that's one of the ways that I've been trying to be more conscious um, for yeah. not just for spending, but just I've had so many records that I've gotten just because, oh, I should grab that. And, you know, some of them yeah. are pretty expensive, yeah. 50, 60, 70, and I've never opened them. And I know, like, we just did an interview actually with John, and he had some records that were unopened from record store days. He's giving me the stink eye, but so like, but how dare like, you call but, me out? No, but but it's not even a call it. It's just one of those things. Like you 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 take pride in what you have, and you want to have things in your collection. But sometimes it may not be what you're going to immediately listen to. Yeah. Mm. And I think now after the pandemic, people are being a lot more, in some ways, more cost effective with their spending. So yeah, no, sometimes. that's nope. Yeah, same. <laughs> I that's the same thing. I use Spotify a lot too as like a qualifier yeah. for if I'm going to purchase because, as you said, like I don't know where's near as many, but you know, it's an expensive hobby. And if I'm going to acquire more things, like it's got to be a record that's really special to me, right? Otherwise, yeah, and you're probably like you said, you're already paying for Spotify, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? Right. So I have a subscription so the kids can just, like you said, it's just easier to just have the family package. So Dave's just recently got on going, Oh my gosh, <laughs> right? So I got to tell you something, Dave, about Spotify. Fine. If you go to obscurify.com, it will take your your current Spotify profile and it will give you a population of music that is obscure based on the artists you already listen to. Hmm. And when I've done it a couple of different times, artists I've never heard about from all different parts of the world that do fit a lot of the like prog rock and like riffy rock bands I listen to would have never found them. So it's a fun way to find new music, just uh, obscurify.com. There you go. Yeah, and you just put in your URL, and then it'll just do a little thing, and it gives you a whole playlist. <laughs> yeah, I do appreciate I always like looking at, like, the Discover Weekly play- playlist Spotify does. I discover a lot of songs that yeah, way, yeah. too. That's the one thing with streaming is that it is easy now to discover new tunes that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all just want to make sure that we're supporting artists in the best way. And streaming services definitely have been a little bit, of, not so much of a hot topic, but we need to make sure that, okay, maybe Ryan or the guests that we're booking here don't make anything from Spotify, but mm-hmm. it's making sure that we're going to their band camps yeah. or buying their merch or making sure that they sell it on the show that gives them that kind of full yeah. circle. So I don't mind using streaming services as long as I'm still doing the other stuff to help the artists. Yeah, supporting the bands you really, really love by buying the record. (laughs) Yeah, or, you know, like... Or their T-shirt or merch. people out to the show. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's been a big part for us. Yeah. And that makes a difference. It really does. Yeah, and so you guys mentioned that you went to go see a show at the Imperial Theater, and then you had the show here. Do you guys have any, like, upcoming concerts that you're excited about, like, that maybe aren't here or things that you're looking forward to in the future? I'm curious to see what other summer concerts Air Five of Six will announce. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to one Harvest show, uh, Daniel Daniel Lanwa nice. playing Harvest. Yeah. I got trade tickets. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, exactly. Yeah. Um, saw him the last time did you yeah i did i got tickets and then my partner went and i did, he took a friend and i was like um i don't need to say tree again and then it ended up being a great show yeah. <laughs> so i was like i won't miss that boat again yeah it was good it was a good show his whole pedal board situation just is kind of fun to watch so but yeah so uh land in fredericton that's in the fall um we are taking the, all the girls to great leg swimmers in uh like the end of this month, yeah. Area Five or Six. Oh, that'll be great. And that it's such an easy place to see a show there. It's accessible and it's not too big, and mm. so. Um, and just quite a few cottage shows coming up. Um, I don't think at the moment there's no other shows outside of that. Mm. Um, well, there no, there's Dead and Company. <laughs> oh, oh yeah I will. Oh. hey hello that there's I dead and company stream. yeah i'll stream a couple of those yeah. i love doing the fish yeah. streams yeah. they're yeah. great yeah and they make it very easy for people to just get it get yeah. their merch in advance of shows it's great fish has the best marketing i gotta mm-hmm. say it i say i think i say that three times a day <laughs> like on like client calls and, and different yeah. things it's fish have you seen what fish did with this <laughs> yeah. like they've really nailed it down. i remember being in college and it was in my textbook 
Oh, wow. Like we talked yeah. about fish and like their marketing and how they just, they really had it together. And that's how, you know, like there's a reason you see deadhead yeah. stickers everywhere oh, yeah. and people, you know, and same with like dancing Nancy, with Dave Matthews, different things yeah. like that. Um, no, but that's really exciting. We we're going to the Doobie Brothers in October. Mm. We have sound check floor two Doobie Brothers tickets in October. So fancy is with that, Michael McDonald. Where is that back? Where where is that? Avenir. Oh, okay. in Moncton. Yeah. And I yeah. saw. Well, it was funny because we were away when I saw it pop up. Yeah. And I've been wanting to see Michael McDonald because I'm a big Steely Dan yeah. guy and girl, I guess person. Um and. I kind of realize now that Walter's gone. I'm not going to be able to see that. And unless I want to go to like New York or someplace, yeah. really I'm going to get a great show by seeing the Doobie Brothers with yeah. Michael McDonald. Yeah. So nice. I thought, you know what? And then the next day they ended up announcing Moncton. And I just got, I was like, nope, yeah. we've got the tickets. We're going now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we've got Matt Mays uh, in August. Down yes, in. That's a great birth. That's my, on my birthday. It's going to be a great birthday show. And, and like 506, we have a few different things, yeah. but we'll, we'll be coming yeah. out to the shows for sure here. So, but if you're listening and watching and you want to get in touch with Sarah and Dave here at the cottage, we encourage you to do so. It's the space. I honestly, I, I'm so inspired when I come to your house mm. and I'm, I have such a, a bit of calm come over my whole sense of self when I arrive here. And it just feels like um, every little nook of your house is really inviting and really special. And I wouldn't know where to spend my time yeah. if I was actually here. Yeah. Um, and I really look forward to coming to spend some more time and seeing mm -hmm. a show. And and again, if you're listening or watching, we really do appreciate it and encourage you to follow the Cottage yeah. Facebook page and to kind of keep up to date on what's going on. And if you have any questions or album ideas that the the, yeah, the, the, the that they should remake, let us know no. in the comments. Um, we'll pass them on. We'll pass them on. And uh, thank you guys, seriously, for inviting yeah. us back to your home and, and letting us know what's going on. We really do appreciate it. Always had a different setup than our Zoom, Zoom I recorder. I love this evolution. I love this for us. Well, so. thank you so much for listening and or watching. And until next time, keep, keep it, it strange. strange. If you've enjoyed this, then you have to hit strangegrooves.com for more amazing content. To support this podcast and music community, go to patreon.com slash strange grooves. As always, keep it strange.